afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, as an introduction to my message, uh, I hardly assembled a video last night, so just excuse the video. Promise I will uh, discard it afterwards. It's just for this purpose only, so it might be a bootleg uh, video. And uh, you might also um, know the narrator, so uh, let's listen to him. Into the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Theopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I'd like to continue the words of uh, Dr. Mike. He said, who were these uh, two disciples? Uh, we know one of them. Uh, the, one of them was uh, Cleopas, but we do not know the other. And he said that probably it was Mrs. Cleopas. <laughs> we don't know whether it was a man or a woman who was the other disciple, and probably the reason why Luke didn't name the person is that so that we can put our name uh, into the story that we could be the other disciple we can uh, identify with the story so these disciples were discouraged their hopes were crossed as they were walking uh, from Jerusalem to uh, outside of Jerusalem and then Jesus comes along and uh, talks and walks with them. And they were so discouraged. And as Jesus talks with them, it changed the whole situation. So, so today, the reason why we are uh, discussing this is we are going to look at these verses and learn what brought the change in the attitude, in the outlook of the disciples, what Jesus told them. So that 
they were so excited from being so discouraged, their hopes were crossed, and then they were so excited after that. So that's our purpose for today. In verse 13, it says that the two disciples were having a walk. Actually, it was a seven-mile walk. If you go out from here and walk into Lake Avenue, and then walk to the 210 freeway, and then go to where we were meeting before in Boys and Girls Club, there's about five and a half miles. So the disciples were actually walking more than that. And they were having a talk while they walk. And they were talking with each other about what had happened. If you would like to know the, you know, the possible scenario of what they were talking about, I'd like to encourage you to watch it at uh, gci.org, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> so we thought that Jesus would redeem Israel from the Romans. They were thinking that Jesus would be redeeming just Israel and just from the Romans, but Jesus had a bigger plan. He was redeeming the whole world, and not just from the Romans, but from sin, actually. And in verse 15, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Verse 16, but they were kept from recognizing him. They didn't recognizing, they, they didn't recognize him. They were not expecting him, actually. Oh, if you do not expect somebody to be there, you would not recognize that person. And the last thing they were expecting was his death followed by a resurrection. Verse 17, he asked them, What are you guys discussing? As he walked along, they stood still, their faces downcast. Uh, he could have walked up to them and, you know, told them, I know exactly why you guys are sad. You are so full of unbelief. Go ahead. Out of here. Out of Jerusalem. I don't need disciples like you anyway. You're so unbelieving. But thankfully, Jesus is not like that. Instead, he was very patient, very gracious. He asked them, why are you guys so sad? And what are you discussing about? Of course, he wasn't interested about uh, the answer for information. He already knew, of course, what was going on. He was just wanting them to, you know, um, give out or uh, draw out the confession from themselves. They want, he, he wanted them to admit what they were thinking. And verse 18, one of them named Cleopas asked him, were you sleeping all the time? Are you the only person who came here in Jerusalem, visiting Jerusalem, who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Everyone knows the things that has happened. And he said, what things? He asked. So he wants to hear it from his own, their own experience. About Jesus of Nazareth, he said. He was a prophet. And notice, he, did, he didn't say, he is a prophet. His was in past tense. He, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped, again in past tense, we had hoped that uh, he, they were hoping that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And so that was, they were so dejected at this time. In addition, some of, our, uh, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. I think Cleopas, the way he said it was, some of our teary-eyed, emotional, crybaby women, they went to the tomb very early. And they said that they saw the angel and told them that, uh, he was risen. Really? It seems even some of the disciples bought their story. I think that's what, what uh, Cleopas was telling. Uh, he, he dismissed the whole thing. 
And he said in verse 25, finally, Jesus uh, gave them a word of rebuke. He said, how foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things, then enter his glory? Yes, he rebuked them, but he did not say, you're foolish, and he left them. No, he remained with them, he walked with them, he was patient with them. And he taught them scriptures. Verse 27, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Notice what evidence did Jesus give to them. He didn't say, look at the prints in my hands, just like he did to Thomas. Look at my wounds. He didn't say that. He didn't say, let me show you, show you a miracle. Uh, let me show you a physical evidence. What he showed them was a spiritual evidence. The first Bible study that Jesus gave after his resurrection was a study on prophecy, beginning with Moses. I wish Cleopas had a, an iPad or a, a cell phone that he could record the Bible study that he has. Because it, from Moses to the prophets, Jesus Christ preached the gospel. And using all these Old Testament uh, verses, but now we can only imagine what they were talking about. Probably he started out with Genesis 3, about the uh, serpent, the woman will have the seed who will cross the head of the serpent. Ask Cleopas, remember that? Me. And probably he went to Abraham and Isaac, where they were going up to Mount Moriah. He was going to sacrifice Isaac. Remember that, Cleopas? Me. And probably he went to um, Exodus 12, the Passover lamb, the blood that was covered in the post. And then probably Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22. You can just imagine those verses. I hope Cleopas recorded it. Or Luke wrote it. So, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, 300 or so fulfilled prophecies, actually. And in verse 28, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. After walking seven miles, Jesus indicated that he was re ready to just continue walking. But if he did, they would not have <laughs> known his identity, who that person was talking to them. In verse 29, they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Jesus accepted the invitation. But they have to invite him, to invite him in. He doesn't say, Behold, I knock on the door. And I am in the door and knock. And if you would not let me in, I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, I'm going to blow your house in. No, Jesus Christ doesn't force himself into our lives. Uh, but if you invite him, he responds, he responds instantly to that invitation. I think we have this opportunity every day, every morning as we get up. Of course, we can live our lives by ourselves, make our own plans, go our own way. But... We can get up and invite Him into our lives. Walk with us. Abide with us the whole day. And enjoy His fellowship. And in verse 30, when He was at the table with them, He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized Him. And then He disappeared from their sight. <laughs> Let me read to you from a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Sometimes, a very dramatic moment 
we have a very dramatic moment when our eyes are open. And as soon as we recognize it, the moment is gone. We do not get a chance to whip out the handcuffs and lock him up, put him in the briefcase so that we can pull him out whenever we happen to want him. No, we cannot control him. They recognize him and then he disappeared. Verse 32, they ask each other, were not our hearts, our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? It's a very important thing to notice. When did the burning of their hearts happen? When did the burning of their hearts happen? Did it happen when they spoke to Jesus? Or they speak to Jesus? Did it happen when they were talking with each other? Did it happen when they were giving their personal testimony? It happened when they stopped talking and started listening to Jesus who spoke to them about all these things regarding the scriptures. When Jesus spoke to them, their hearts burned within them. When Jesus spoke to them, their hearts burned within them. That is called a clue. If we want to have passionate hearts, if we want to have burning hearts, we need to stop talking and start listening to Jesus Christ, listening to the Word. And what did Jesus Christ speak to them about that caused their hearts to burn? Notice that it was not a new revelation. It was not a new secret, mystical knowledge that only a few people are private to. He spoke to them verses, scriptures that they grow up listening to. These uh, disciples, Cleopas and his friend, they were Jews. They were taught, they were familiar with Old Testament scriptures. And that's what Jesus told them. Beginning with Moses and the prophets, he expounded all things concerning himself. And that's when their hearts burned within them. As if Jesus Christ opened the cur curtain and let the light in on those familiar texts and it burned their hearts within them. They got it. They, their eyes were open. Scriptures make sense to them. I think it's, they call it illumination, but what we need for our hearts to really burn within us it's not us actually, it's from God. God has to open our eyes, have to, we has to bring to us to familiar scriptures, familiar text, and He will illuminate our minds to His words. When we were still meeting at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, I remember Pastor Birmi asked us to, uh, encourage us to read, read through again through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm not going to ask uh, where are you at this time now. I'm sure that many of us uh, got stuck between probably uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Bikat Bikat, <laughs> somewhere there. But as we study the Word of God, as we listen to God speak into our heart, like Cleopas and his friends, our heart is going to burn within us. And notice what happened when they experienced this heartburn. Verse 33. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. That's what happened. Remember that they were going away from Jerusalem. They were so hopeless. They were discouraged. So they were just going away from church. And when their heart, when they experienced this uh, burning heart within them, Immediately, they got up, returned at once to Jerusalem. Remember that it was a seven-mile walk 
And it was already night time. They even encouraged to Jesus to come in because it was already dark. But they didn't even say, uh, say that I'm a little bit tired. Seven mile walk and going back again. Let's just sleep a little bit. No. Immediately the, they just went back there. And it's like from here to probably Santa Anita and didn't have any horses. They just walk, maybe probably half run, half walk, and they return to Jerusalem Prampu. They were so far up. And in Jerusalem, they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, verse 34, and saying, It is true, the Lord is risen and has appeared to Simon. So what a change. No more. Uh, we had hope you know, in him, but all those hopes are gone now. And how do you think they were, they were saying to them, it is true? Do you, say, do you think they just say, yeah, it is true. Um, he, he is risen. I don't think they, they said that. Otto, what do you think? I think they were stopped. <laughs> I think it means they were very excited. <laughs> So, to rekindle the passion, to rekindle the drive, to put fire into our belly, to have our hearts burn within us, we need to tune out all the other voices and cultivate a listening habit to the voice of God through His Word. We need to open our Bibles again and have the Spirit of God shed new light to familiar verses. It's where the burning, burning of our hearts would come from. So let's pray. Dear God, our Father, would you please speak to us as we listen to you through your words. Open our eyes to see what we already have, Father, as the Apostle Paul says. Open our eyes to the storehouses that the rich says that we already have in Christ. Help us to see your words in a fresh new way, Father, and ignite our hearts with fire, with passion for you, so that we might get up and return at once to Jerusalem, just like the apostles did. Thank you so much, Father. We just commit our lives to you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.